Welcome to Direct U.S. Immigration's channel, where you get direct access to our most up-to-date immigration and global mobility space. My name is Matreya Brown, and I'm going to talk about information, forms, and documents needed to file Form I-130 for your spouse. You're not going to want to miss out on this one. In. My name is Matreya Brown, and I'm a U.S. immigration attorney based in Washington, D.C. I'm also the principal attorney at Direct U.S. Immigration, where we work with clients in all 50 states and around the world. Before we start, click on the like and subscribe button to follow our immigration hub to get the latest immigration information that could be vital to your case. And also, be sure to stick around until the end to get bonus information about visa overstays and unlawful presence. As you know, the requirements for petitioning a foreign citizen spouse for permanent residence or a green card are more exhaustive than any other relationship. When filing Form I-130, which is the Petition for Alien Relative, the petitioner must submit supporting documents to evidence the relationship because immigration officials from the U.S. Department of State and USCIS will have additional layers of scrutiny for spousal relationships. After all, sham marriages are one of the most common ways to commit green card fraud. So immigration officials want to be sure that your spouse obtains a green card based on a genuine relationship. Now before you begin preparing Form I-130, reviewing an I-130 checklist of items you'll need is very important to prepare to file this form. So let's talk about the petitioner's information. So the petitioner is the U.S. citizen or lawful permanent resident that is filing the petition. The petitioner preparing the I-130 must provide details about the following. So their address history for the past five years, dates of previous marriages and when they ended, employment history for the past five years, and details about any previously filed petitions for the beneficiary or any other foreign nationals. Now with respect to the beneficiary, the beneficiary is the intending immigrant who will apply for that green card uh, in the U.S., so that permanent residence. The beneficiary must also provide details, which include address history for the past five years, uh, dates of previous marriages and when they ended, employment history for the past five years, Form I-94 if they've ever been present in the U.S., and any previous immigration proceedings. Now, when filing Form I-130, Preparing a complete petition package that includes all of the necessary supporting documents is extremely important. So USCIS will send a request for evidence, also known as an RFE, for any information that is missing. This additional step will likely lengthen the time it takes USCIS to decide on the petition by several months. On the other hand, a well-prepared petition package will improve your chances of a quick I-130 processing time. Now here's a list of items that you'll need. So of course the USCIS filing fee. So uh, in order to submit the I-130, it does require a fee. So make sure that your check or your money order is payable to the US Department of Homeland Security or by credit card if you're using form G-1450. Now you can also include a cover letter, though this is optional. Um, USCIS does not require a cover letter. Um, however, a cover letter can help itemize the documents you are submitting and clarify any extraordinary circumstances that you may have. Now the next item is Form I-130, um, so make sure that you submit this uh, accurately prepared petition. Uh, the best way to keep your case on schedule is to fill out the form correctly and neatly and ensure that it is the correct edition. Also, don't forget to sign it. Some cases require Form I-130A, which is the Supplemental Information for Spouse Beneficiary, um, and USCIS requires this supplemental uh, form only if the beneficiary is a spouse, uh, and generally in the U.S. Um, also, you need to provide proof of status. So if you are a U.S. citizen, you can submit a photocopy of you know, your birth certificate if you were born in the U.S., uh, your U.S. passport, naturalization certificate, uh, certificate of Citizenship, or Consular Report of, of your birth abroad. If you are a lawful permanent resident uh, or a green card holder, you can submit a copy of both sides of your green card or other proof of permanent residence. 
you'll also want to submit uh, your marriage certificate. So definitely include a copy of that marriage certificate to prove that there is in fact a legal spousal relationship recognized by the government body where the marriage was performed, whether it was performed inside of the U.S. or outside of the U.S. Now, if either you or your spouse were previously married, submit copies of documents showing that all prior marriages were legally terminated, such as divorce decrees or death, or death certificates if the marriage was terminated due to uh, death of a spouse. Also, you want to submit two passport style color photos of yourself and your spouse generally taken within you know 30 days of filing the, the uh, petition and then uh, most 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 importantly you want to make sure that you include evidence of a bona fide marriage so including evidence that you have a true marriage is so important it's important to demonstrate that you are married for genuine reasons not to evade u.s immigration laws to obtain a green card so you'll need to submit copies of documents showing evidence of your shared you know, financial liabilities, assets, insurance, tax filings, uh, birth certificates of children uh, born into the marriage, and other documents showing that you do in fact have a true relationship. Now, of course, every case is different. Um, there are different supporting documents for different cases. Uh, mm -hmm. So the example of an I-130 checklist described above is just for a typical case. Um, depending on your specific case and how you answer certain questions on the petition, additional documents uh, and or evidence may be required at the time of filing. Um, an example includes if, um, if you, know, you or your spouse have a criminal history. Um, so if that you know, is, is within the case, then you would wanna show uh, disposition records and just you know, proof of, of what happened and what the decision was on the case. As promised, Here's some bonus information that you may not know about. So again, we're going to talk about visa overstays and unlawful presence. So certain individuals who have accumulated a period of unlawful presence in the United States could have a legal obstacle in getting a green card. Unlawful presence includes any time spent in the U.S. by a foreign national who uh, entered the U.S. without inspection, uh, an admission or parole, or whose lawful immigration status expired or was rescinded, revoked, or otherwise terminated. Any time spent in the U.S. beyond what is authorized on an I-94 record is a period of unlawful presence. This is also known as a visa overstay. Generally, persons with a period of unlawful stay should seek assistance from an immigration attorney like myself when applying for a green card. I hope you found this video helpful. Subscribe if this content or information helps you in any way. Comment below if you want me to talk about something in specific and share this resource widely because you never know who needs answers to these questions. Additionally, if you have any specific questions about this video as they pertain to your unique circumstances, please schedule a consultation with us also at the link below and I'll see you in the next video.